Welcome to the course, Basics Digital Storytelling. Okay, so um, you can access Grasshopper just by typing in Grasshopper. And um, in Rhino 6 and previous versions, this was a separate plugin, so you have to just install it separately. But since Rhino 7, um, so the version that should be on all the computers in uh, at Alta, as far as I, uh, as far as I know, uh, uh, this so graph software is integrated in the um, in Rhino seven, so you don't need to really install anything. Now Rhino comes, uh, Grasshopper comes like with million plugins, uh, and that's kind of one big advantage. And I'll show you actually where to get them. Uh, it's called Food for Rhino. Food for Rhino, or actually I don't know how to write it. Food for Rhino. Okay, so it's called Food and Number Four Rhino. And here you can actually get all the all the plugins. Um, and again, there is like million million of them. And some are for Rhino, some are for Rhino Grass. So for kind of uh, it'd be like an addition or a plugin for a plugin. Or, but it's a very very large e ecosystem. Or so, for example, Kanga Roo should be somewhere here. They always have names according to some animals. So Kangaroo Physics is a that is a uh, for example, a plugin to do physical simulations in Grasshopper. So you can do like physics simulations in Grasshopper. And um, yeah, kind of, if you go a little bit more into structural engineering, this is uh, uh, something that you might be interested in. And then again, there's like tons and tons of things that you can use for modeling. Um, and again, there are some course uh, courses in the masters and also our studio in the masters that we have with uh, Tony Kotnik. Uh, with the students, we actually use Grasshopper and some of the plugins as as well uh, that are quite advanced okay so that's where you can kind of get it uh, if you don't already have it and um and yeah so when you open grasshopper this is not really an intro into grasshopper just like very quickly to show you uh, this is a canvas so basically you can start putting components here these are all the components that you can use and uh, you basically can combine them to create something um, and in theory, like everything that is available in Rhino as terms of functions is also available in Grasshopper in some way. Uh, and again, you can actually add more things to Grasshopper as well. So it's very extendable. Uh, okay, so for example, let's, uh, uh, let's do something super simple. Uh, we can do like an input. So here there's some parameters. These are like input parameters. So we can take some geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper. So here we can take, for example, a, a curve, this one here, click, and um, uh, maybe take two of them. So I can just copy paste them. And the components always have on the left side is the input and on the right side is the output. Um, or actually let's go a starting simpler or so let's, let's take a point. Uh, so I can also just double click here um, on the canvas and write in point. So, you know, um, or no, actually, even more. So we, we can build up everything from scratch or so uh, we can put in a number or so I can put, for example, just write in 100 and it, 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 it immediately kind of gives me like a slider or these are the standard inputs in Grasshopper. So this is like a slider. There are also something here under input number slider. And then I can change, um, I can change the type of slider um, the minimum, maximum, and so on. But basically, I just take these these two, uh, or I take the slider now as it is. Maybe I can set here to go to minus hundred, let's say, uh, and then I'll just copy paste this one, um, and this one I'll just call x coordinate, and this one I'll call y coordinate. Okay, so I have two two numbers, and these numbers they they kind of they come out on the right side, or so I can put in a there's something called a panel. And I can plug in a panel, and I'm basically getting two numbers out. Or so just turn a little bit of this, yeah, something like this. Okay, so um, I'm basically getting two numbers out. So it's it's a it's a list, and this list um, has only one element in it, and one element is forty, and the other element is you know whatever I said here. Okay, so I'm basically getting these two numbers out. Um, now I can use this, for example, to construct a point or so I can, um, instead of putting the point from Rhino, I can kind of construct the point or so I can go here under vector 
point construct point and this is a component so on the left it has uh, inputs on the right is an output or so the and the here when i hover above it tells me basically what the inputs are so the x coordinate y coordinate and here i just go plug x here so you just kind of click and click and sort of plug it in and now these two inputs are going into the point here or um, and then I can change the x and y of that point, and it's it's kind of automatically shown here. So it is a dy dynamic preview, so it's interactive, and that's that's kind of cool. And what else can I do? Well, this is a very simple example, so hopefully I will not spend too much time on this. I can just copy paste this whole thing. Now I can have two points. Actually, I don't need this preview even. I'll delete these panels, so I just have two points. Uh, I just copy pasted the component, so now I suddenly have two points appearing here, and now I can construct a line. I can double click here, say line. There are multiple components for lines, so you have to be careful which one you use. But use this one here, it says create a line between two points. And now the line takes A and B. So point A, point B, so start and the end. This is maybe the start, this is the end. And ta-da, I, I have the line. So when I talk about parametric modeling, uh, this is what I mean, or so, or this is what we mean when we say parametric modeling. That now we kind of draw a line, but we didn't sort of manually draw it in Rhino. We we defined in a way a small code, a small procedure, in a way relations, where we go from numbers, four numbers in this case, to um, you know points, and then these two points combine into a line. Or so now I kind of I can get any line I want by just kind of changing the numbers here. Or so this is this is this is a parametric model. Some questions here. If you drag the point in the top, view do the values change in grasshopper. Um, yeah, so uh, that's a good question. Actually, these points, if you would try, if you would play play with it, uh, these points are not directly selectable in grasshopper. So these are or they are not directly selectable in Rhino. So look, when I zoom in, I cannot select them. They just don't exist. Um, so because it's, there's somehow this, this is just a preview that Grasshopper gives you, but you can kind of bake this. You can kind of put it into, into Rhino. So there, there's a bit of a, let's say a gap, gap between these two. So if I go on a line here, right click, just say bake. Okay, now this line is here. Or so, now it's a separate line. I can do the same thing with these points here. I can just select them, right click, bake, okay, select last. Uh, there's somehow I just baked one point, but I can bake the other one as well. Okay, so basically you can create the parametric geometry in Grasshopper, and then you can sort of, um, you can just kind of move it into, into Rhino as well. Let me just save this. Uh, again, if you do any, if you do any sort of, um, tutorial in grasshopper this is like you know the first thing that this you go in first 10 minutes or something so um but i'll just save this here and i will call it uh 21 1008 grass hopper basics okay okay and um go a little bit further let's say i can i draw a curve here in um Let's say I draw a curve here in um, in Rhino. So I'm just using this curve command. So you can kind of go the other way around. Or so you can kind of take things from Rhino and put them into Grasshopper. Let's say I have these curves here. Now I want to put them in. So I would use the input component here, parameters, input. And then I choose, uh, actually here, geometry, curve. Okay. And I can change, change the name. I can say curve one, whatever. Copy, paste. There's a curve two. But this is just for me, so I know which one is it, which one is which. Then I can go right click. I can say set one curve. Go here and can select that curve. The other one, right click, set one curve. Hop. Okay. So now I selected two curves, and they are kind of still in Rhino, so I can kind of move them around. They this, but basically, Grasshopper is sort of referencing these curves here. Now I can do something with them. I can, for example divide a curve. So the same command that I just used today, divide a line or curve, I can just use it here. So I can double click. I can just write divide and then I can look for it. Here it is, divide curve. It's also under here in the curve and then division. Many ways to divide a curve. 
Okay, and because I have two curves, maybe I can do it twice, copy paste. So first curve goes in here, second curve goes in here. Now I get these division points, but I can change this or I can, again, put a number slider, just double click and just write 100, you will get the number slider that goes from zero to 100. And then you can feed it into N and N is the number of divisions, or number of segments. And you can feed the same slider into the bottom one as well, if you want to have the same number of divisions. Okay, so now we have one slider that controls two things. Uh, and yeah, if I change the, you know, now, you know, before I had to kind of manually say how many points I want, and then I would click, I would get these points, and then I would, I would have to go back if I wanted to change the number of points. But here, I can just change the, num the number here, and I'm getting kind of dynamically, um, dynamically sort of a different, different number of points. And let's say I want to create line. So this, I made the last example, of this sort of basics. Uh, let's say I want to create line between these points. Or, so I can use this line component, same one. So like this right here, line, this one here. And the thing is that the points that I, I take a panel here, the points that I get here are actually lists. Or so it's, it's, a, it's not one point that I get from this component. This is the exit or the, what, this is the kind of function. And this is, these are the outputs, or so I get different things. One of them is are these division points. And if I plug it into a panel, I can see how this looks like, or at least how the coordinates look like. So um, basically, I get two lists of points. This is how they look like. Uh, so I, again, I don't get one point, I get a list of points, and I can just match them. I can basically feed it into a line component. Uh, the grasshopper will interpret this, okay, I apply this function, but I kind of match the first point in this list with the first point in this one. And then I do another line with, you know, this second point in the first list and the second point in the second list. And it will just do this matching. Or so that's kind of what's kind of happening if I just plug in points here into A, points here into B. Okay, so it's, it's kind of a grasshopper sort of can work with, individual elements, but it can also work with a list of elements if it's, if it's clear, if it's clearly defined what, what needs to happen with this list. Of course, so now we have a bit something that is a bit more powerful because now I have a, you know, I can kind of, um, uh, I can just, again, dynamically change the number of points, which dynamically changes the number of these lines. And then I can even go back to Rhino and I can change just the input curve or I can just start modifying it. I'm getting kind of this, um, dynamic preview or because as soon as I change the input, this whole thing gets recalculated, you know, in real time. So, so yeah, that's it. That's kind of a little bit uh, the charm. And now I want to just show you, so this is just basic, basic, basic. Again, you can continue <laughs> as much as you want. Uh, I'll just show you a few things. So if you're, if you're neurotic, you can start ordering these things a bit so you can, for example, select and there's this, uh, you can kind of order them a little bit so they are kind of align them and so on. Uh, again, or you have OCD or something, you can do that. That's what I do all the time. Um, so you can make your components. These are actually called components. These are actually, I mean, they are kind of functions. Okay, this is kind of a grasshopper canvas. Okay, so that's one example. I would like to show you, uh, I would like to show you, Let's close this one and let's delete these lines. So example scripts that I will give you, they will be in the folder uh, is this flow along vector field. Now that's a little bit more advanced, but you know, no reason to be afraid. Okay, so, um, and I'll explain a little bit what happens here. So this is actually a custom scripted component. So you can actually create your own components in Grasshopper, And that's actually what I do uh, a lot in, in my work as an architect and designer, uh, also in the office, uh, we just do a lot of this, or I do a, a lot of that. Um, you basically write code and then you turn it into a component and then in Grasshopper, you can give it to your um, coworkers and they can sort of play with these numbers, get different results. And uh, yeah, you can kind of, if you're in, you know, you're basically a designer, but you're designing a way to code. Also many examples that I showed you the first, um, the first, um, uh, first day 
we're kind of showing you basically what can be done with code. Now this code is actually here. If you double click here, uh, this is the code. Our code is actually here. It's written in Python. That's why I said, if you know a little bit of coding, it can get you really far. Um, the, the other components in Grasshopper are written in a different programming language and you cannot edit them directly. But uh, these Python components, um, you can edit actually. So again, that this is something for some of you who are interested in these topics in the masters. We have courses that kind of cover this. Okay, but here I want to just show you a little bit what this basically this whole component is doing. Um, it's um, as an input, it's taking so-called attractor curves. And I can actually first uh, take this particle number all the way to zero. Okay, so we start with these attractor curves. There are just some lines, uh, and here they are also internal lines. So they are kind of um, they are sort of already saved in the component, but we can put uh, input new ones if you want from from kind of line. But these are just few lines, and we create in a way an underlying vector field, and this vector field is defined or there's a vector value defined for every point, which is sort of like an average between these vectors, and then we can use these to guide particles. We can have kind of particles that are randomly distributed here like a pattern and they kind of flow along this field okay so uh, let me just you can see here so if i start changing if i start adding these uh, particle number um it, they just kind of appear or so there's like more and more of them appearing let's go all the way to up to 1000 and what are these particles doing or so there is something uh, parameter here called vector scale so vector scale is actually prolonging their step or so this is a short step this is a long step okay so i can kind of control how uh, what is the length of the step that these particles are doing on this vector field then uh, there's a step number so i can kind of control how many steps are there and you can see here because i have a certain it's called jitter Jitter is basically introducing a little bit of random. So if I put it to zero, I get kind of a sort of a very smooth field. You can see these lines, they are very smooth. They don't overlap. Um, but if I increase, increase the jitter, they kind of start deviating a little bit from the path. Or so I get a little bit more natural. I mean, it's not natural. This looks a little bit like hair, almost like gross. But uh, the, the plan with this code was to look, to make it look a little bit like grass or so. Um, yeah, the kind of grass like, but for that, we need to maybe adjust a few parameters. So we have this jitter, then maybe we reduce the number of steps. So we just say the steps are not very long. Okay. Uh, so we reduce the, this vector, well, actually, we reduce the number of steps all the way down, maybe to three, but we increase this vector scale, or so we increase the. Um, the length of the step, or so less steps, but uh, but but a bigger length. Or and by just changing these numbers, you can actually a little bit influence how these um, strands sort of look like. Or you can see a little bit here what happens now if I'm change this jitter. Now they are kind of not bending so much; they are kind of bending generally in one direction. So they look less like kind of gross curly hairs, but uh, more like kind of blades of grass. Let's say the step goes even to two. And vector scale goes even further. Also, by just kind of changing these parameters, you can really sort of change a little bit how how this whole thing sort of looks like for vector scale. Yeah, and uh, yeah, something like this. Uh, maybe even less steps too. This one a bit longer, a bit more. Okay, so the idea here was that it looks a little bit like kind of grass, let's say. Even though again it might look a little bit like like here and i just want to show you now how to change i have the seed here is um just changing the random seed so there's certain randomness uh, how these um you know how the jitter behaves so every blade of grass is moved randomly left and right uh and and there's a random seed in the system that controls how this is done so we can change that random seed um so here manually so that we can kind of get sort of different versions of the same code or so this is just all sort of randomizing everything then the renormalization is yeah what the renormalization is doing is it's just the toggle you have to kind of double click what that does it says well the 
the grass or these strands that are closer to these input vectors, which here you can see very lightly as kind of green, uh, they are sort of longer. And the further they are from these vectors, they are, they are, um, they are shorter. So that's kind of what this effect is sort of doing. So maybe you can even uh, let's see it like this. Okay, so you can change that. And then, um, uh, yeah, and that's it. And then let me just show you what happens if I change the input vectors. Also here we have one, two, three, four. We can just change, uh, we can just draw a line in Rhino. Line, and let's just put it straight up. And we can select it here and say, right click, set one curve. Okay, so now you can see that all of my blades of grass are sort of pointing up. And again, I can kind of change a little bit how, how this happens. If I rotate the curve, they all sort of rotate with it. Or they all rotate it with it. So I can kind of change the general direction of these, um, of these blades of grass, let's say. And then what else? Uh, yeah, I can have multiple of these, or so I can kind of copy, uh, copy paste. Okay, I copy paste these blades of grass or copy paste these sort of input vectors. Now there are two of them. Is there two? Yes, there's two. And I can say again here, right click, set multiple curves. Oh, set multiple curves, yeah. And um, nothing really happened because they point in the same direction. But you can see what happens if I start changing it. Or so now suddenly there are two of them and they kind of they compete for influence. Or so. Some of them, you know, the ones that are on this side, they go in the right direction, and those that are on the right, they go toward the left. So I can actually kind of a little bit influence how I can sort of have multiple of these, and I can sort of change how these, um, how these, how these behave. And yeah, let's just put kind of let, if if we have a problem kind of seeing this, we can just select paths here, right click, remove the preview. Let's actually. Uh, draw more lines so I can just kind of I see it already almost ran out of time so I just do kind of a few of these let's again we can kind of be very free with how we do this we can have as many as we want and uh, that way we can kind of locally sort of change what's happening and again we are interpreting these lines in this case as um, we're interpreting these lines as vectors or so if I select these lines in Rhino and if I say dir which is uh, direction you can see, I mean, all geometry in Rhino has a direction. Also, a line has a start and an end point. A surface has also kind of two directions or parameterization runs in two directions on a surface. And there's also kind of a, you know, origin point of the surface. Um, even when the curve is closed, there's always a start point somewhere. It's called the seam point because that's kind of where the sort of curve, where the start and the end point of the closed curve come together um, and that means all these lines that have directionality and we can sort of use this information it's like when you draw by hand or you you can draw a line from left to right or from right to left it's, it looks like the same line but somehow you drew it differently and again if you use a different drawing technique maybe you have a brush or or something else you might actually see the direction of how the line was drawn on the paper so that's also some information that is could be encoded in this paper or in this drawing, but that might not necessarily, you know, be planned or or you don't even think about it. But in a computer, uh, lines have direction, so we can use these as we can pretend they are like some some influences or forces that run in some direction. Okay, so that those are here, and again, attractor curves. And right click, set multiple curves, and I just select all of them, and now I get the result, but I don't see it because I turned it off. And under paths, I can just say here preview and here they are also these are kind of the some kind of waving patterns and again if I want this uh, if I want this I can just select these and say right click bake maybe I can just say group here okay and I can say here select last aha uh -huh. I somehow uh, have this problem I can only I guess bake one component by one so I have to see paths right click Bake group, yes. Okay, now I have these these ones here as well. Or so I can just kind of copy. Well, I don't have to copy them, I can just move them. Oh. Okay, just move them a little bit here. 
Okay, and uh, yeah, this is now my, these are now my kind of drawings here. I think, I'm not sure if the, these vectors are here as well. No, they're not. I would have to separately sort of take them or bake them. Uh, but these are just curves, or these are actually groups. I can say ungroup. Um, and they are now just individual lines, so I can kind of further edit them. And you can imagine if this is not my drawing, I can just, you know, I can use these or either parts of these, like to select it like this, copy paste, just move it somewhere. And now I can use this as a mid pattern in, um, you know, somewhere. I can start um, uh, sort of not really nesting these, but Kind of arrange these so i can just take this and just do copy paste now, of course all of these are the same so that's not really that interesting it's like a repeating pattern but you can imagine that i can maybe do multiple versions that are all different or i can make a big uh it's sort of a bigger bigger grid and um yeah and then again um using the technique that i showed you with a cage edit you can kind of again select this and further distort this field or so just a paste. I don't know, I can't do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can kind of further distort this field by using a cage edit, let's say. Um, so you can kind of you know adjust the seams and so on. But again, in, in a very rough way, this is how you can create irregular patterns, um, maybe as a way to extend the patches that are already available in Rhino. Um, 